It has more islands than any other country, there are just 5 people per square kilometer, and it's no longer neutral. Today we're talking about Sweden. Sweden is located in northern Europe, quite northern. The country lies between 55 and 70 degrees north, and around 15% of its area lies above the Arctic Circle. Sweden shares borders with Norway to the west and north, and Finland to the east and northeast. Sweden's 1600 km border with Norway is the longest in Europe. Despite being separated from nearby Denmark by the Strait of Øresund, since the year 2000 Sweden has been connected with Denmark by the Øresund Bridge and a connected underground tunnel, which together extend 12 km across the strait. With an area of 450,295 square kilometers, Sweden is just slightly smaller than Spain, and almost the same size as Papua New Guinea. The official language of Sweden is Swedish, of course. It's a North Germanic language, which is very closely related to Norwegian and Danish. There are several videos about Swedish and the North Germanic languages on my other channel, Langfocus, which you can find in the description of this video. The language learning app Duolingo has a Swedish course, and most of the people using it to learn Swedish are located in Sweden. This is due to the large number of immigrants and refugees currently living in Sweden, who learn Swedish as a second language. Sweden has a long history of accepting people fleeing conflicts and disasters around the world. This includes Jewish refugees fleeing occupied Denmark during World War II, refugees from the Balkan Wars in the 1990s, and refugees from Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria, and other countries in the 21st century. But not all immigrants to Sweden are refugees. Many people move there primarily for work or family reunification. These immigrants live alongside the majority who descend from medieval Norsemen. The human presence in what is now Sweden goes back as far as 12,000 BC, but written records about the area are sparse until around 1000 AD, during the Viking Age when Swedes, Danes, and Norwegians raided towns across Europe and settled in areas of northern Europe like the British Isles, Ireland, Normandy, plus the Faroe Islands, Iceland, and Greenland. Sweden was made up of small kingdoms and chiefdoms belonging to different tribal groups like the Swedes and Geats. But Sweden grew into a unified kingdom, specifically under the rule of King Olaf Hutkonung, and adopted Christianity over the course of the 11th and 12th centuries. The Åland Islands and the coast of Finland were already settled by Swedes, but in the mid-13th century, Finland was gradually conquered by Sweden, and remained under its control for more than five and a half centuries. Sweden and Norway formed a union in 1319. Then in the late 14th century, Sweden and Norway were unified with Denmark as part of the Kalmar Union. Denmark was the strongest of the kingdoms and gradually expanded its control over the others. Many in Sweden grew opposed to the Kalmar Union, and in 1523, Gustav Vasa, whose father had been killed by the Danish, became king of Sweden and permanently removed it from the union and the domination of Denmark. During the 17th and 18th centuries, Sweden grew into a great military power and an empire as it acquired territories through war, in addition to Finland, which it already controlled. These territories included parts of Germany and Poland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and parts of Russia. At certain points in time, it also included overseas territories in Africa, the Caribbean, and the present-day USA. Sweden gradually lost these territories over the course of the 18th and 19th centuries, including the devastating loss of Finland to Russia in 1809. Sweden took part in one last war in 1813 to 1814, which forced Denmark to give Norway to Sweden, and the two countries remained in a personal union until 1905. But the earlier territorial losses led to Sweden's policy of neutrality, which it maintained throughout the 19th century and most of the 20th century. It even remained neutral during the Second World War and throughout the Cold War. But in recent decades, Sweden has become less strict in its neutrality, having close ties to the NATO alliance, and in May of 2022, Sweden applied to become a NATO member in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Sweden doesn't share any land borders with Russia, but the two countries share a maritime border on the Baltic Sea, and Sweden is uneasy about the vulnerability of its largest island, the strategically located island of Gotland. Sweden is well known for its staggering number of islands. With 267,570 of them, it has the largest number of islands of any country in the world, just ahead of neighboring Norway. Of course, many of those islands are tiny, more like large rocks, and less than a thousand of them are inhabited. One small uninhabited island is Marquet Island, which is located between Sweden and Finland and is divided between the two countries. Look at this strange boundary line. Why on earth would a border be drawn like this? What happened is that Finland built a lighthouse on the highest point of the island, which happened to be on the Swedish side. 
disregarding the border because the island was uninhabited. The two countries later agreed to a land swap so that both sides would maintain the same amount of territory, while allowing Finland to keep its lighthouse. I guess it wasn't worth fighting a war over an island with only 0.03 square kilometers of territory. A notable feature of the Swedish landscape is that it's around 69% forested, one of the highest percentages in the world. Places as far north as Sweden are normally less densely forested, but Sweden is influenced by the Gulf Stream Current, which flows all the way up from the Gulf of Mexico, giving Sweden a much warmer climate than other areas at a similar latitude, allowing for dense forest. Stockholm has an average January temperature of minus 1 degree Celsius, while there are places in North America or Siberia that are further south, but have January averages that are 25 degrees colder. Sweden is also very active in reforestation, planting trees to replace those it cuts down. Sweden is politically divided into 21 regions, called counties, which are the top-level division of the country. But historically and culturally, Sweden's 25 old provinces are still important. The provinces of Sweden can be placed into three groups, southern, central, and northern. Southern Sweden, or Jotaland. The southern provinces of Sweden, collectively known as Jotaland, are the breadbasket of the country, as the land is flat with rolling hills and the soil well suited to agriculture. The southernmost part of Jotaland, Skåne, or Scania in English, did not become a part of Sweden until the 17th century, and as a result retained some differences from the rest of Sweden, such as its regional dialect of Swedish, Skånska, which is closer to Danish. Skåne is where Sweden's third largest city is located, Malmö. The second largest city in Sweden is Gothenburg, which is also located in southern Sweden, in the province of Västergötland. The southern province of Småland is where one of Sweden's most internationally known companies, IKEA, was founded. Southern Sweden is also where you'll find Sweden's two largest islands, Gotland and Uland. The largest city on Gotland, Visby, has an incredibly well-preserved medieval old city, all of which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Central Sweden, or Svealand. The central Swedish landscape is more rugged than the south, with many small mountains and deeper valleys. Many of Sweden's 22,600 lakes are found here, such as the lakes Vänern and Vätern. Central Sweden is home to Stockholm, the capital and largest city in Sweden, with a population of close to a million people, and over 2.4 million in the metropolitan area. It was founded on 14 large islands, and is often called the Venice of the Baltic, because of its many canals. Those 14 islands are part of Stockholm Archipelago, which consists of around 24,000 islands. Northern Sweden, or Norrland. Northern Sweden comprises half of Sweden's area, but is home to less than 10% of its population, the reason for Norland's sparse population is its climate and landscape. It's the most mountainous part of the country, and where you'll find the Scandinavian mountains. Sweden's highest peak, Kebekanaisa, is located there. Being further away from the moderating effects of the sea, Norland is by far the coldest part of Sweden. Temperatures below minus 20 are common here during the winter. But those willing to brave the cold weather are rewarded by the stunning natural phenomena. It's one of the best places to see the northern lights. And in early summer, there's the midnight sun, days with 24 hours of sunlight. Above the Arctic Circle, this lasts for weeks at a time. Then in the winter, there's the polar night, days when the sun never rises above the horizon. This lasts for as long as 28 days in Sweden's most northern towns. Popular places to enjoy the beauty of Norland are the Aurora Sky Station in Abisko, with its spectacular panoramas, the Kungsleden, a 450-kilometer hiking trail that cuts through the Scandinavian mountains, and Laponia, a natural area which was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996 for its outstanding state of preservation. The population of northern Sweden is concentrated along the coast in cities like Luleå and Öme. The north is also home to the Sami people, a distinct ethno-linguistic group that spans the Arctic areas of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and northwestern Russia. Northern and central Sweden are rich in natural resources such as iron, gold, and zinc. In the 20th century, the exploitation of these resources helped Sweden achieve high levels of economic growth, and Sweden has simultaneously made impressive moves towards sustainability and environmental protection, at least compared to most countries. But even Sweden's move towards a green economy has sparked controversy, as many green industries are being developed in northern Sweden, where they can disrupt the traditional Sami lands and way of life. Sweden is a constitutional monarchy, with a monarch who is head of state and a prime minister who is head of government, and who must keep the confidence of the parliament, or riksdag, to stay in office. 
Swedish politics might seem a little chaotic because there are numerous parties in the Riksdag with none of them having a majority. That's because Sweden follows a system of proportional representation, meaning that the percentage of seats a party gets in the Riksdag is more or less equal to the percentage of the national vote that the party got. But to prevent too much fragmentation, only parties with at least 4% of the national vote are represented. Sweden's first female prime minister, Magdalena Andersson, actually had to resign less than 12 hours after taking the position because her narrow coalition failed to pass a budget, but she was reappointed a few days later. Politics aside, Sweden is not known as a chaotic place. It's known for the serenity of its natural landscapes, its commitment to sustainability, its support for human rights, and openness to those fleeing violence and persecution. If you're from Sweden, what's something else you want people to know about your country? And to other people? If you've ever visited Sweden, or if you'd like to go there, what is it about Sweden that attracts you? If you'd like to support this channel and see videos one week early, click the join button next to the subscribe button to find out how you can become a channel member. As I said in this video, Finland was under Swedish rule for hundreds of years. Check out my video on Finland. I guarantee you'll learn something new and fascinating about Finland and its connection with Sweden.